3 I Atlas just broke apart, and what we're witnessing isn't a random comet disintegration. It's a controlled separation that has completely changed the threat assessment for Earth. Tracking stations worldwide detected the split approximately 36 hours ago. Atlas, the mysterious interstellar object that's been defying physics since we first observed it, suddenly divided into two distinct fragments. Each piece is roughly half the size of the original object, approximately 400 meters across, and both fragments are now maneuvering independently toward Earth on separate trajectories. But here's what's sending shockwaves through the astronomical community. This wasn't a natural breakup. Natural objects that fragment in space create chaotic debris fields, with pieces flying in random directions at varying speeds. Atlas separated cleanly into two equal-sized fragments that immediately began executing independent course corrections. Within hours of the split, both pieces were actively maneuvering using their own propulsion systems. We're not watching a comet fall apart. We're watching a spacecraft that just divided itself into two operational vehicles, each apparently capable of independent navigation and mission execution, and both are heading directly toward Earth on trajectories calculated to arrive at our planet from different directions simultaneously. The question isn't whether Atlas could split anymore. We watched it happen. The real questions are why did it divide itself, and what happens when both fragments reach Earth at the same time? Multiple observatories captured the separation event. Atlas began emitting unusual electromagnetic pulses approximately two hours before the split. These weren't the communication signals we detected previously. These were high-energy bursts focused internally, apparently activating separation mechanisms within the object's structure. An aerospace engineer analyzing the event described it as engineered. What we observed matches procedures for spacecraft separation, the kind of controlled division where one vehicle splits into two independent craft. There were preparatory energy pulses, structural releases, and then a clean separation along what appears to be a designed seam. This was built to split. The separation itself occurred over approximately eight minutes. Atlas's two halves moved apart gradually at first, maintaining parallel orientation for several minutes. Then small thruster burns from each fragment pushed them further apart, creating distance between the two pieces while keeping them on similar trajectories. What's extraordinary is that both fragments remained fully operational after separation. Each piece immediately began generating its own electromagnetic emissions, showing independent power systems. Each started making navigation adjustments, proving autonomous control, and each demonstrated the same impossible capabilities that Atlas showed before the split. Propulsion, maneuvering, active scanning. A spacecraft system specialist explained the significance. Designing a vehicle to split into two independent operational units requires incredible engineering. You need duplicate power systems, redundant propulsion separate control systems, and mechanisms to maintain both pieces after separation. This isn't accidental fragmentation. This is modular spacecraft design at a level we've never achieved. The split also released something else that has researchers deeply concerned. Observatories detected dozens of smaller objects emerging from the separation point. Tiny fragments between one and five meters in diameter spreading out into space. These aren't debris. They're moving under power, taking up positions between the two main fragments like they're establishing a communication or sensor network. Multiple tracking stations confirmed that these micro-objects are actively maneuvering. They're maintaining specific geometric formations relative to the two main fragments, creating what looks like an interconnected system spanning thousands of kilometers of space. The timing of the split is also significant. Atlas divided itself at a point in its trajectory where both resulting fragments could reach Earth efficiently. If it had split earlier or later, the pieces would have required much more energy to achieve their current approach vectors. The separation was timed for optimal mission continuation. Uh, the really alarming aspect of this split isn't just that we now have two objects to track, it's where those objects are going and how they're getting there. Fragment A, the larger of the two pieces by a small margin, is approaching Earth from what's called the prograde direction, coming in along the plane of Earth's orbit around the Sun. Its trajectory will bring it toward Earth's dayside, approaching with the Sun behind it from our perspective. Fragment B is taking a completely different route. 
It's maneuvering to approach from above the ecliptic plane, the flat disk where planets orbit the Sun. This fragment will arrive at Earth from a steep angle, coming in over Earth's North Pole region. An orbital mechanics specialist described the strategic implications. These aren't random trajectories resulting from a breakup. These are calculated approach vectors, designed to reach Earth from different directions simultaneously. It's classic military doctrine, approaching a target from multiple vectors to divide defensive attention and complicate response. Current projections show both fragments will arrive at Earth within a six-hour window of each other, approximately 18 to 21 days from now. Fragment A will reach Earth's orbital distance first, followed by Fragment B arriving from a completely different direction while Fragment A is still in our vicinity. The approach velocities are also carefully controlled. Both fragments are making periodic thrust adjustments to maintain their synchronized arrival timeline. When one fragment's trajectory analysis shows it pulling ahead, it makes small braking burns. When the other falls behind, it accelerates slightly. They're actively coordinating to arrive together. But the trajectories serve another purpose beyond synchronized arrival. By approaching from different directions, the fragments will have unobstructed views of different regions of Earth. Fragment. I approaching from the solar. Direction will observe Earth's day side and the hemisphere facing away from the sun during approach. Fragment B coming from above will map polar regions and have a different perspective on Earth's surface. Between them, the two fragments will achieve complete observational coverage of Earth during their approach. No blind spots, no unexplored regions. If this is reconnaissance, it's incredibly thorough. If it's something else, the dual perspectives provide tactical advantages we can only speculate about. The micro-objects released during the split are also positioning themselves strategically. They're spread along both approach trajectories, creating what looks like relay stations or navigation beacons marking the path to Earth. Some have taken up positions ahead of the main fragments, possibly conducting advanced scouting. Others trail behind, potentially providing rear observation or communication links. A space surveillance analyst described the formation as military grade. The positioning of these objects shows coordinated mission planning, main assets approaching from multiple vectors, supporting elements providing overwatch and communications, advanced scouts gathering intelligence. If this formation were approaching Earth from a hostile nation, it would be recognized immediately as a multi-axis attack profile. The question that has scientists, military analysts, and government officials debating intensely is why Atlas divided itself at this specific point in its journey. Several theories are emerging, each with different implications for Earth. The most optimistic theory is redundancy and survivability. By splitting into two independent objects, Atlas ensures that if one fragment is damaged or destroyed, the other continues the mission. It's exactly what we'd do if we were sending a probe into potentially hostile or dangerous territory. Build in redundancy, so mission completion isn't dependent on a single asset surviving. 